Huh, it's spinning around me. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a pretty interesting discovery. At least in terms of the astronomical achievements. A discovery of yet another very difficult to see black hole somewhere out there in a nearby galaxy known as the Large Magellanic Cloud. And more specifically, it's actually a discovery using an extremely interesting technique. Because as you can probably imagine, by nature, black holes are extremely difficult to find. And so even though we expect millions and millions of them in our own galaxy, we've only discovered a handful. But today we're going to find out a little bit more about this particular discovery and why it's actually somewhat interesting in terms of scientific achievements. Although, let's start with this image right here. Because the location itself is also extremely interesting. This location is known as the Tarantula Nebula. It's probably one of the most iconic star-forming regions around us, and it's actually one of the most important astronomical regions to begin with. A lot of really interesting things are happening here at all times. And in this case, we're focusing on the part that you see, which is essentially the star that we're discussing today. And if you've ever seen the image of a large Magellanic Cloud, you probably know that it doesn't really look like a typical spiral galaxy. And it's very likely because it's actively interacting with the Milky Way galaxy and with its partner, Small Magellanic Cloud. And because of all of this interaction, it essentially formed these relatively active regions, and one of them is right here. So this region that we refer to as the Tarantula Nebula, with another really interesting region that you can kind of see in the middle, known as R136, is probably one of the most well-known regions in astronomy. This region produces a lot of new stars, many of these stars are extremely active and extremely massive, and the most massive star ever found, R136A1, is located right there, somewhere in the middle of this. It's not really clear how massive the star is, but it's very likely close to about 300 masses of the Sun. With the R136 region by itself containing several million masses of the Sun as well. And because there are so many massive and very active stars here, it's sort of expected that many of them will go supernova, as one of them has in the past. The most recent nearby supernova was the supernova known as SN 1987, which was detected in 1987. The supernova you can learn more about in one of the previous videos right there or in the description, with a lot more potential supernova happening in the next few hundreds of years. So this region is kind of expected to have these because of the amount of stars being actively generated and sort of creating these massive objects. But at the same time, because of this, because of how we know that stars go supernova and turn into various neutron stars and black holes, we also expect a much higher population of black holes in this region as well. Black holes that could be completely by themselves, or maybe with a small partner, or possibly even absorbing mass from their partner. And when it comes to black holes, there's really only two ways currently of essentially finding them. Either if they're absorbing a lot of mass, like the one doing right here, and then emitting a lot of X-rays and a lot of other really high uh, frequency energy, or if they're orbiting around their partner in just the right way, so that the partner seems to be actually moving as well, around some kind of an invisible object. And so in other words, if we were to take a look at all of these stars, and if we then somehow found a way to see their wobble or their interaction with the nearby objects, and then suddenly we discovered one of them, kind of going back and forth regularly, but also around another object that we cannot see, at least in theory, it would imply that we might have found some kind of a black hole. Although obviously, there could be other explanations as well. For example, maybe it's not a black hole, but a much smaller star that we just cannot see. Or maybe the star itself is somewhat unusual and periodic, and tends to change its brightness, which kind of makes it appear like something is shifting it around. Which means that the scientists have to be super careful when trying to make these claims. And that's actually what the team behind the study does. They're really good at sort of disputing these discoveries of various black holes. You can learn a little bit more about their discovery in the description below. But they're essentially the team known to debunk various black hole discoveries. They were the ones that debunked the closest black hole to us, a video that you can also find in the description or somewhere right there, explaining that this was essentially just a different type of a star that did not really have a black hole around it, with their overall observations and analysis usually being extremely detailed and very difficult to argue with. But this obviously doesn't stop the scientists from trying again, and from essentially trying to find these so-called dormant black holes. Black holes that are not really emitting much light, they're not producing much energy, 
and are only interacting with the nearby environment in some very minor ways. With the Tarantula Nebula very likely being the best place to look for these black holes because of the amount of massive stars which we expect to produce black holes to begin with. And this region is extremely interesting for a lot of different reasons. So for example, one of the ways that we think all of this is generated is because of the interaction with nearby galaxies that create what's known as REM pressure. A kind of a pressure in the gas which generates a much thicker wave of material either escaping or moving into a certain region, which then, if it collides into something else, can suddenly start the formation of new stars. For example, the iconic ring galaxies, many of which are still difficult to explain, are believed to be created in a somewhat similar way, where all of the gas escaping the central region collides with something on the outskirts and starts forming these stars that form a ring around the galaxy. Here's actually one of the more iconic images showing us how all of this works. But in our case, it's a much smaller galaxy and a much smaller wave. But it still generates a lot of new stars, and many of these stars then generate black holes. Or neutron stars, like in the case of SN 1987 supernova I mentioned previously. The neutron star was actually only recently discovered. Video in the description. And eventually we believe that these objects might even form what's known as the global cluster, which will then sort of circulate around the galaxy for billions of years although the exact future of these objects is currently unknown. But what we do know is that the region is very, very active, and obviously produces quite a lot of various types of radiation, including X-rays. And so potentially seeing an X-ray emitting black hole in this case is also somewhat challenging. There's just way too much noise. There is, however, a way for the scientists to see if there is something invisible causing various stars to orbit in unusual ways. And this is actually a technique that was also discussed in a study previously, where the scientists essentially look at the wobble of the star by comparing its red shifts and blue shifts. In other words, if I'm looking at a star and suddenly I see that the star blue shifts or its frequency increases just a little bit and then red shifts or its frequency decreases but does so periodically and for no apparent reason, it means that something massive is orbiting around it and based on the amount of frequency change, it becomes possible to determine the mass of this unusual object. And when the scientists looked at this one particular star, the star that's approximately 25 times the mass of our own sun, and located about 160,000 light years away from us, they've realized that something else is orbiting around it that's about 9 times the mass of our sun. But despite looking for a partner, they couldn't see one. It was an invisible dot in the night skies. And they actually found this after looking at thousands and thousands of stars in this region. And so this is obviously not an extremely common discovery and seems to be kind of rare. According to the scientists, they've actually discovered quite a few of these wobbling objects, but many of them turned out to have some kind of a partner that was then visible. But this binary, VFTS243, appeared to be the only one so far where the wobble is completely unexplained. Or I guess it is explained by a relatively massive black hole, nine masses of our own sun. But assuming that this is a black hole, which it seems to be at the moment, there is a problem with how exactly did it form. Mostly because there are clearly no signs of any supernova ever happening here. Or the more thorough analysis revealed that it was not created via a typical type 2 supernova, which we generally believe create these types of black holes 9 masses of the sun. So if it wasn't a supernova, then how exactly did it form? Well, most likely through the other method the scientists believe may exist as well. The direct collapse. Essentially, a star of a certain mass, upon reaching certain conditions, can collapse into a black hole without any explosions, without anything. Something that we do believe happens with really massive stars, stars that are hundreds of masses of the sun, although in this case they should also be producing much more massive black holes. And because at the moment the best explanation for this particular black hole is the collapse scenario, it becomes a little bit unclear why this black hole is not more massive. Which also means that the scientists now want to find out and why exactly did the star skip the supernova, turning into the black hole directly. Although it is quite possible that the partner in this case could have played a role in this. It could have maybe stolen some of the mass as the star was about to go supernova, while also somehow causing the collapse to occur and preventing the supernova from occurring. And so at the moment it's not entirely clear. Nevertheless, a really interesting discovery and a pretty convincing discovery because in this case there's really no better explanation for what the scientists are observing. But I guess for now that's kind of all we know. 
On that note, once the scientists learn something else about this particular object, or discover some really cool objects somewhere in the Tarantula Nebula, I'll make sure to follow this up in another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.